Hello and welcome to the Daily Coaching Lockdown Football Training Session. So today's session number 36 and today I have four key parts to our session for you. So first of all, we'll be starting off with a warm-up, then we'll be moving into a ball mastery exercise, then a touch slash control challenge, and then finishing up with a ball movement exercise, okay? Now for the warm-up, all you need is a space, a ball, and you're also going to need a post-it note and a pen to be able to make some numbers on them, okay? So I'm going to put numbers one to six, okay? So obviously making sure you have at least six post-it notes as well. So once you've got your space, once you've got your ball, and once you've got your six post-it notes and your pen to be able to make the numbers on there, then we're ready to go. Cool, so first of all, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get my post-it notes with my different numbers on, numbers one to six, okay? And spread them out randomly around the area. Now for the first exercise, I don't actually need my ball, okay? It's gonna be more about my movement. So what's gonna happen is I start in my space, okay? My task is to collect the numbers one by one, so from number one all the way through to number six, and I'm just gonna pop them in order along this wall, okay, along my flat surface. Uh, if you don't have a flat surface, it's not necessarily a requirement because we're not actually going to use it in terms of um, using the ball against it. Okay, but just have somewhere where you can gather your numbers and put them in order. But what's going to happen is I have um, my task, try and see when we get around to these numbers, collect them, find out what different numbers are, and then put them onto the wall in an order and see how quickly I can do that. Okay, so three, two, one, go. So I'm running around, so that's number one, here's number one, and I'm running around, one number two. Cool, okay, and there I've got my different numbers along the wall, okay? Now what I'll do is I'll spread them back out. Obviously, depending on the amount of space you have, you can spread the numbers out as far and wide as you can probably go. Okay, so spread them back out, or possibly get somebody else to if you obviously don't want to know where the numbers are. Uh, and with this one, it's all about the quick speed, quick movement, okay, of the change to the direction as well as having that psychological task going on at the same time. Right? This time, take the ball with you on your journey, use the left foot, right foot, make sure you don't pick up a number um, until the ball is under control, okay? Same as put onto the wall or to the area where you're gathering numbers, making sure that ball is under control of the first ball before you do that, okay? So three, two, one, go. Turn it around, and control, pick it up. On the wall, ball's on the control, ball number two. Control, um, and I've taken the ball with me as I'm going around and I'm exploring these different areas, okay? Um, and again, just a few different adaptations and variations. So that's mainly the, the main bulk of the warm up, okay? Um, again, you can maybe go back to the front and go through number six for one if you wanted to. Um, we can go up in even and odd, so um, one, three, five, or two, four, six, something like that. But the other way you can do it, okay, is just get a little bit of room in your feet. And then if the numbers are all mixed up, to say for example, so one, three, five, two, four over there, six over there. Just moving the ball around with your feet and try and see if you can get these numbers in order, okay? So you're thinking about doing the ball, start with the ball. Okay, we're all keep it moving, get under control. But at the same time as well, you're trying to think about the psychological task of getting the numbers in the correct order too, all right? So, a few different variations there. Give it a try, think about how we make it the numbers in different orders, okay? And also think about um, the two tasks that we have uh, um, on the go. So obviously looking to try and see if we can move the ball um, and also think psychologically as well. Really effective one for our movement, getting lots of touch on the ball and also psychologically preparing us for our exercises. Give it a try and see how you get on. Cool. So that was our warm up. So remember, some of the key points to take away from the warm up is it's all about different types of movements, okay? Travelling at different speeds, 
predominantly quite quickly because obviously it was quite a, a challenge exercise that we've ha had. Okay, we wanted to make sure that we've done it as quickly as possible. Okay, but also as well, main thing as well, think about changing our direction, going left, going right, going forwards, going backwards, basically to identify where these numbers were on the floor. Okay, now obviously when we're moving with the ball, again, it's about getting lots of touches on the ball using different parts of the feet, understanding how using different parts of the feet will effectively help us to create different types of movements on the ball, so help us to move to our left, to our right, change direction quickly, but also keep it under control. Um, very good one for um, our physical um, elements of the game, okay, so really trying to get us warmed up and prepared for our activities throughout the session. Um, good one in terms of getting lots of touches and repetition on the ball as well, okay, being able to explore different types of movements, and a very good one psychologically as well, okay, because we're obviously having to be aware, we're having to react to where the different numbers are, and also we're thinking about the order in which the numbers need to be put up on the um, wall or the area which you have available to you, um, and obviously be able to do that effectively quite quickly. So a really good effective warm up for us to start off with. Cool, now we're going to move into our ball master exercise. And for this one, you need a space, you need a ball, and you need eight objects, okay? Again, I've got cones, but if you don't have access to cones, get your hands on anything from jumpers, t-shirts, jackets, toilet rolls, or cans, anything you can get your hands on around the house, okay? But once you've got your space, once you've got your eight objects, and once you've got your ball, we're ready to go. Right, so in this ball master exercise, what you're going to do is you're going to set out your eight objects like so, okay? So you're creating kind of a square. So each part um, of the square has a little gap in between it. Now what's going to happen is we're looking at using the sole of our foot today for our ball master exercise. You're going to start at one side of the square, okay? And using just one foot to begin with, you're going to move the ball around using the sole of your foot, okay? So I might start at this point of my square, Okay, by the ball going in and out of the square at all sides of the um, shape. Okay, let's an example. I'm going to sew one ball through, then back, then to the side, then through, then to the side, until I get back. Then I'm going to change over to my right foot. Okay, and the key thing is here is we're making three movements using the sole of my foot. Okay, we're pushing. We're pulling, push, and then sole rolling the ball. Okay, either to the left or to the right to be able to direct that ball through um, in and out of my shape. All right, so see how quickly you can go around the whole square. Okay, just use one foot to begin with, um, and that's so you can tie yourself. And once you get around, then do it on the other foot. Three, two, one, go. So roll, pushes, and pulls, different combinations. Now to my right foot, so exactly the same, so push, so pull, pull, so rolls, then I change over to my left foot, nearly a little smooth, just put the back, And cool. And once you get to the end, freeze there again. Okay, so you can keep that repetition going for as long as you want. Left, right, left, right, left, right. You can possibly even go in the opposite direction. So you might go around to the right hand side. Just see how that creates a different outcome. Okay, again, uh, the right foot, pass around to the right. Again, see how it creates a different type of outcome. So this force you can move forward in a different type of direction. And then what you'll do is you'll then do this using both of your feet. So as an example, I'm going to use my alternative of left, right, left, right, okay? So so push, so pull. So roll, so roll, so pull, so push, so roll, so roll. And then once we get up to the beginning, we'll be using both my feet and just keep on going. So push, so pull, so roll, so roll, push, pull, push, roll. And back to the beginning, or what you could do is rather than keeping them around, 
under our control, okay? And it allows us to be able to react, to move the ball between both of our feet a bit more effectively and a bit more quickly as well, okay? Give it a try, lots of touches, lots of repetition, all about becoming comfortable and confident in executing rolls, pushes, and pulls with the sole of the foot. Give it a try, see how you get on. Cool, so that was our ball mastery exercise. Now remember, some of the key points to take away from that is all about repetition and understanding how to push pull and move slash roll the ball in different directions, okay, as we made our way around our square. So at times it was thinking about understanding how to use just our left, how to use just our right, okay, how many touches we actually need to take when pushing, pulling and rolling the ball. Um, also thinking about the type of control that we needed to have over the ball as well. Using the sole of the foot is a really effective way to move the ball um, and push it in different directions, but ultimately as well, keep it under control because at any given time you can just put your foot on top of it and stop it, okay. But that one, really important with it, with it getting lots of repetition in within that exercise, okay? Becoming comfortable and confident in actually executing that movement and understanding, like I said, the type of touches that we need to take using the sole of our foot um, in understanding how quickly the ball travels um, and also to keep it under control. But a really effective one for understanding different techniques of how to push the ball forwards, backwards, um, left and right as well. But repetition is key, becoming comfortable and confident using our left foot, right foot, and then finally finishing up with both of our feet as well um, and understanding to keep light on our toes so that we can quickly react Act, um, towards the movement of using our other foot to effectively again keep it under control or change the direction of the ball. Really good exercise. Cool, now we're going to move into our next exercise, which is our uh, touch slash control challenge. And for this one, you're going to need a ball, you're going to need a flat surface, so something such as a wall or a door, whether you're indoors or outdoors, and you're going to need five objects. So keep hold of five objects from the last exercise, okay? And this is going to help us to create a circle just in front of our flat surface. So, once you get your five objects, once you've got your flat surface, once you've got your space, and once you've got your ball, we're ready to go. Cool, so in this touch less control challenge, what I've done is I've set my five objects, okay, up to create a circle, and I've put that circle just in front of my flat surface, okay, which we'll be using as the session progresses. Now to begin with, okay, all I'm going to do is I'm going to stay inside my circle with a focus ball up in the air, and I can take as many touches and as many bounces as it wants um, for me to be able to get the one under control. The key thing is making sure once it's under control, it's inside this circle, okay, it doesn't go outside the circle. So don't put up too high to begin with, okay, I'm going to take some touches, control it, and be creative with how I do that, okay, touch, touch. I'm using both my left foot, right foot, different parts of my body as well. And I'm just getting into the habit of finding different ways to actually bring that ball down under control. Okay, making sure it's laid off the inside the circle and doesn't go out of it, okay? Just like it you create if you want. Okay, more advanced players, if you want to, you can start by getting the ball up off the ground. Okay, that could be a picture of the two. Okay. And the key things, like I said, trying out different ways of doing this, making sure that, that all stays within the area of one that's under control. Last few. Find what's going on the the area. Just bring it back. Oh, a bit of a mess. 
to our mobile way down the line. All right, so that's the first part. Just exploring different ways to bring it all under control, um, different types of touches, okay? Um, allowing yourself to bounce if you need to, because that's fine. Sometimes you might need to allow the bounce to just to react um, and um, create the best possible effectiveness way of actually getting under control. Then, what's going to happen? We're now bringing our flat surface. We're going to place directly against our flat surface. We throw the ball against it. And then again, similar, many touches, many bounces as you need, making sure that ball is under control and stays within this circle, okay? So turn into our flat surface. Touch. Bring under control. Throw. Touch. doing this okay first of all just practice getting the ball under control as many bounces as many touches as you need okay combination of different body parts left foot and right foot then looking to try and see if you can throw it against the wall with flat surface then bring it down under control and then moving running and reacting towards um, the ball but obviously the ball's going back in the opposite direction so really thinking about when to take our touch which type of touch we take how are we taking the speed weight and power away from the ball okay um, and which direction are we actually taking that touch to force the ball to go into? Is it away from us? Is it up? Is it down? Okay, lots of psychological considerations there. Give it a try. Be honest, it's quite a fun one. Allows us to be quite creative with it as well. Um, but it is a challenge, especially when we get down to that final one. That's what it's all about, okay? Just find different ways to tackle these challenges. Give it a try, see how you get on. Right, so that was our touch test control challenge. Now remember, some of the key points take away from that is that there wasn't too many physical demands, okay? So it wasn't overly working our body, but it was all about understanding different types of techniques and ways, exploring and being creative in how we actually keep the ball under control from the air 
onto the ground, still, okay, and inside our circle. And it was so important to use different parts of the body, to use our left foot, right foot, different parts of our feet as well, just to really understand how to take away the power, speed, and weight um, in which the ball's traveling at towards the ground, okay, and really try and make sure we get it under our control, okay? Uh, I said that we always allow bounces because ultimately within a game, sometimes you may need to allow it to bounce just to be able to move around and react. Again, the best possible position to actually control the ball. Um, and obviously, I said as well, you can take as many touches as you need as well. Obviously, the um, fewer touches you take, the more effective that control will be because then you can think about your next move within the game. But ultimately, this is just a technique exercise which involves lots of repetition. Like I said, exploring and, and lots of opportunities to be creative as well and just understanding these different ways to be able to get the ball under control. Um, we also thought about doing it where the ball's just coming up from the ground, up from the air, it's coming straight down. We also thought about when it's coming towards us as well, so off of the um, flat surface. And then the final one, which is quite a big challenge, okay, because the ball's coming towards us in one direction, we're actually traveling in the opposite direction um, towards and going and meet the ball. So it's all about understanding, again, how to take away that power, speed and weight behind the ball, okay, and how that when we're traveling towards that ball and that ball's traveling towards us, okay, that's gonna be a harder challenge to do. So it's all about thinking about which direction does the ball need to go up or go in, um, and often, more often than not, it was traveling with the ball upwards, okay? So getting the ball to travel in an upwards direction to then bring it back down, to bring us back to that first part of the exercise. Cool, now we're gonna move into our next exercise, okay? And for this next exercise, you're gonna need a space, you're gonna need six objects, okay? So get your hands on, I've got my hands on cones, get your hands on anything from jumpers, t-shirts, jackets, trainers, things such as that, something which you used for those um, previous eight objects in, in one of the other sessions, okay? But once you've got your space, once you've got your six objects, and once you've got your ball, we're ready to move on to our ball movement exercise. Right, so for this ball movement exercise, what you're going to do is you're going to set up your six objects like so, okay? So I've got a square initially, and then I've got another two um, objects, which are um, at the top end of the square, and it just creates a little gate, okay? One something which we'll look to try and um, explode out of. But basically, what's going to happen, in this one, you're not going to just your left foot or right foot, okay? You need a combination of this room with, uh, on and with the ball. But what's going to happen is I either go around to the right-hand side of the square or the left-hand side of the square. Whichever side they go around to, that will be the side I break out to once I go through that final gate at the end, okay? Okay, so that's the example, okay? Move around to the left, move back in, and then I go out to my left, okay? Come back around to the beginning, this time I might go around to the right, okay, round the outside of the square, through, then I come out to the right hand side, all right? So, key thing is looking to try and see if you can go out to these different sides. I'm gonna suggest starting just by going through one side only, so I'm gonna only go around to the left, once I've done that for about 30 seconds, then I can switch on to the right. And it's just that we get some nice and comfortable with um, making sure those turns are under control and what parts of speed we need to use to the left, then so the arc will to the right. Okay, so just round to the left to begin with, starting in three, two, one, go. One, two, three, four, out and around, through to the left, around to the edge, and to the left again. Lots of turns, lots of changes of direction in here for the ball. Left, so I a combination of inside, outside, shoulders. More making sure it's off centre and shoulders as well. Combination of my left foot, my right foot, inside, outside, 
sole of the foot to force the change in direction, possibly speed, and then the movement of the ball, last one. And three there, okay? So, using different touches on the ball, we had to go out to the left or to the right, um, making sure obviously we're keeping one control, taking with us on our journey, and actually moving the ball. This time, if I go around to my left, I cut out to the right. Go to the example, out to my right. If I go around to the um, right hand side, out to my left. Okay, so I'm mixing up that variation of movement now, right? So, this time, I'm going to say you don't just have to be left or right foot to be actually combine these movements. So it's up to you. You can make a decision on which side to go around to uh, each time I'm about to start, right? Three, two, one, go. Right to my left, right to my right, right to my right, go to my left. Then right, okay, oh, sorry, not left only, left side only, then right side only, okay, going around the left side of the box, out through the left, in, in between the gate, around the right side of the box, out through the right side of the, the gate, then combining and mixing those movements up, so around to the left hand side, out through the right, okay, around the right, out through the left. And this one's all about repetition, movement on the ball, um, and changing our direction based on um, where we're heading. Okay, the key thing is make sure we're under control so that we can actually really make sure we execute these changes of direction quickly and effectively. Give it a try, good physical one as well as getting used to the movement on the ball. Okay, so give it a try, see how you get on, um, and see how quickly we can change those directions whilst keeping the ball under control. Give it a try, see how you get on. Cool, so that's it in session 36, which is very quickly to recap on some of today's key points. So today there was a big heavy focus on movement with the ball, okay, and on the ball. It was all thinking about how to use different parts of the feet, using our left foot, right foot, and combining those movements together to use the inside, outside, sole of the foot and laces to actually move the ball, keep it under control, and travel with the ball on a journey as well, okay? And we've got lots of opportunities to have uh, repetition within that today, lots of opportunities to get lots of touches on the ball. And the key thing is that, with that as well, is making sure that we're becoming comfortable and confident in actually executing these movements. So yes, we may have had a journey to actually travel on, but it's really, really important that when we're traveling on that journey, we're comfortable and confident in actually uh, making those movements on the ball. That's the key thing here. And that's why repetition is key within this and all about understanding and exploring these different ways to actually move on the ball. We also did slightly touch on a bit of a technique in terms of our touch slash control challenge, okay? Thinking about how to bring the ball down under control onto the ground, okay? But also ultimately with that one, very similar with our ball movement, repetition was key gave us opportunities to be uh, creative and explore and find new ways of doing it, okay? So that we can effectively perform these movements and execute them, um, obviously, when we're in a game-type situation. Cool. As always, I really hope you enjoyed today's session. Please make sure that you subscribe, like, comment, and interact with the video. Let us know how you got on, okay? Share some of that good feedback. Let us know any types of sessions in which you want to see coming up, because again, we want to make sure that they're as relevant as possible to you, okay? And obviously at the um, level of challenge is appropriate to you as well. Um, but as always, good luck with the sessions. I hope you enjoy them. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Good luck, take care, and I'll see you soon.